This video is sponsored by, I'm just kidding, I'm absolutely broke. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is a long time coming and I know it's not gonna do well on my channel because, well, I'm a sports channel, but you know, deep down, right next to, to basketball and the NBA and the Sixers is the love of film and TV. And I'm just gonna do my first ever video essay and on what better show than New Girl. I finished it a while ago and Let's get into it. How I'm going to go through this video today is I'm just gonna give some initial takes just to start off with like a nice little thesis, right? I'm gonna break down every single character and what I like about them, what I dislike about them. And after all the characters and my nice little thesis, I'm gonna just conclude it, you know? It's like a nice little college paper. I graduated college like three years ago now and I haven't written a paper since, so I might as well dust off the old laptop and then break open Microsoft Word, get to work, you know? Let's let's do some initial takes. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you want more of this content. This is very not uh, like what I usually do. Don't worry, sports is never gonna go away, but I'm trying to integrate film more into my channel because of how much I love it, and I'm talking too much. The character of Jess is a very good character. It was written kind of in this like hipster era of like the new wave. It was like cool to be geeky and nerdy and hipster and weird. Um, it's like the movie Elizabeth Town starring, uh, was it Kate Winslet maybe? Kirsten Dunst, Kirsten Dunst, that's it. And it's just like, she just plays this weird quirky girl and it's very annoying. There's a reason why this trend just didn't sustain life. Clearly, and so New Girl coming into the era of that quirky, cute, weird girl um, took the life by the bull by the horns. I, I don't know, I'm trying to get like cliches and none of them are coming up. Anyway, they take this and they go running with it. Um, the only thing is, I think what makes New Girl so amazing is the fact that they acknowledge almost instantly that this does not work. Jess is a very good character. But Jess is not good enough to be the main character of a good TV show. And the directors and the writers notice that early on and that is what is great. And instead of trying to push this kind of unlikable character, borderline unlikable character in your mouth until to the point where you're just like, dude, I can't watch the show anymore. They kind of did a 360 without making the show completely different. And it really, really, really worked. I mean, instead of pulling her out to be this main character and, and the show becoming unlikable and annoying because of how much she is in it, they build up the other characters and they decide, that they decide to, to, to spend more time on the other characters over Jess gradually until the point where it just seems like Jess is just another supporting role and there is really no main character. If anything, it could be argued that Nick at some point along the lines becomes the main character of the TV show. And I love that because I love Nick. And Nick isn't even my favorite character. It's because the, the, the characters and the supporting roles of this show are so deep, they're so well-written, that it makes you love everyone. And that's very difficult for a TV show to do. But don't get me wrong, Jess is a very good character and Jess really, really works as a supporting, supporting character because it's not too much. Her personality isn't overbearing when she isn't the lead. And I really think just by accident, just by luck of the draw, it helps New Girl become a pretty good show. A lot of the characters make fun of Jess. A lot of the characters are very aware of how annoying Jess is. And the characters play the eyes of the audience and it helps us be like, okay, yeah, I'm not the only one to think this girl is extremely annoying. New Girl herself. And, um, what I love so much is that the show does not make Jess the show. The, uh, she's nearly a part of it as, as as the other characters are. You know, the other car characters, personally, I think they take the cake over Jess almost every single time and in and, and every single season and scene and, and moment. And I really enjoyed that. And another thing is, I just think I really enjoy Jess because she's a very, um, she's very giving and, 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 and good actor. I think she does a lot. It, it could have been very easy for any actor to be like, you know what? Nah, screw this. I was promised this this amount of um, screen time and I'm not getting it. But instead of doing that, I think she really, you know, gave herself for the betterment of the show and the show turned out to be 
freaking really, really, really good. Let's get into the characters and what better character to start off than my absolute favorite character and one of my favorite comedic com uh, comedic characters in all of TV history. It's got to be Schmitty, right? I mean, Schmidt is an extremely well-written and genuinely written character that it just works. And one thing that I really noticed from the beginning that it made me very wary of the show, it made me very wary of the character, was the use of, like, the fat suit and the use of making jokes of him being fat in his old days. Because, you know, normally I tend to hate stereotypical comedy. I hate comedy that is just general lazy. And it's some similar to Friends. I don't like the idea of using a fat suit for comedy because I just find it really, really lazy. I mean, anybody can make some stupid cliche fat joke and play off of it for multiple episodes. And I never liked it in Friends because of Courtney Cox and I just thought it was stupid. I never thought any of the jokes they made on it was funny. And the difference is they use it for a totally different angle for Schmidt and New Girl. I mean, it is completely different than Friends and Personally, I think they really knocked it out of the park. Guys, I know many of you probably already hit the dislike button because of how much you love Friends. And I get that. I get that. But to me, Friends just used it to show Courtney Cox's character's personal life and to show how out of control she was and how all she did was eat and just the stereotypes of being overweight and obese and... It just was an easy way to land fat jokes when they had absolutely nothing else to do. But in New Girl, they use it to give him an alley of growth and, and pure genuinity. Something about Schmidt's character is rooted very deeply into the, to the fact that he used to be obese. And it comes out to be pretty beautiful. I mean, the weight gain and the weight loss gives Schmidt this, this really deep understanding of self-awareness. Which is ironic because Schmidt is the most self-image obsessed character ever. But, you know, he got more insecure, insecure after losing the weight, which is so interesting. I mean, the relationship he had with his, his girlfriend um, in college when he was this big fat guy was a better relationship that he had with any other woman prior to um, Cece. And it's just, it's, it's really interesting how they used... The, the the fat suit to, to, to prove that he was just a different person and felt like he had to act a certain way because he just wasn't that anymore. And I mean, it turns out to be all of a facade and, and it really shows the, the, the power of, you know, self-worth, the power of your, your self-image to yourself. Um, and Schmidt is really a self-image obsessed character, but it is when he is so truly his most genuine self is when he becomes the most likable character in the entire show for me. I mean, he has some extremely real moments where he's just, he's being real with Nick, he's being a good friend, he's always there. And deep down, I really do think he is arguably the nicest one out of all of them. He has that dick kind of exterior, but it's, 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 it's pretty easy to look past that after the first couple of seasons when you really get to know Schmidt because of how well-written the show is in general and how much work they put into really diving into each character, which I am personally very grateful for. I think one thing that really is just so amazing to the show is that it, it handles the two main characters' relationship different than any other show I've ever seen. It's not like a show where you see the main character and the main female and male, male, main male character, you know, will they, won't they, will they, won't they, will they, won't they, and then at the end of the show, they finally get together and get married. No, this show is literally nothing like that. What I love so much about this show is you know Nick and Jess are going to end up together. They hammer home almost immediately that Nick and Jess are going to get together. But instead of Nick and Jess getting together immediately and just, or, or even at the end, they, they play it perfectly. They play it perfectly. You know these two are getting together, but it's just a matter of when, not if, which I can really appreciate. The show makes it very, very early on known to you that Nick and Jess are going to be together, as they should, because duh, you know? Every big show ever, every spoiler ever, you always hear about who ends up together. That's just the way it is, you know? Um, there are so many examples. If I had a working brain right now, I'd be able to tell you. But 
this show does a really good job because they get the characters together at first and then they just, they break up. And it's not because one cheats on the other to make one character a little less likable. It's just that it didn't work out, you know? And instead of pretending that they don't like each other or don't love each other for the rest couple of seasons until the very end, it is very known that these characters love each other, but the timing is wrong. And as a person who lives in real life, in real life relationships, in real life situations, I can appreciate when the timing is wrong because that's just very realistic. If anything, timing is the most important thing when getting together with another person because timing rules all, you know? Time is the everlasting winner. And in this show, they, instead of running away from that and trying to force their own narrative, they kind of let that chemistry build. And it's pretty beautiful. The payoff is amazing. There are so many times where you think it's going to happen and you're kind of on the edge of your seat because you're like, all right, this is the moment. This is the moment that they're going to get together. They don't. And then they kind of hit it to you when you're not really expecting it. And it's just a very, very worthwhile payoff. And I think New Girl really kind of paved the way of a, a, a new uh, way to look at how to build relationships within a story. A show-saving relationship for me was the relationship between Winston and Cece. The friendship between those two, honestly, guys and girls, I, th I think saved the show for me. I think saved those two characters for me because standalone, I don't like Cece. I don't think she's a very strong character and I just don't love the scenes that she's in. I don't think um, she has many moments on her own or in other... Um, situations outside of her and Winston. And Winston, I can say the same thing for him. I just think he's a very forced character. I don't think a lot of the, the humor written for him is very good. I don't even think it's the actor's fault. I just don't think they wrote very well for Winston. And the two of them together completely crash that complete thought that I just had. I, I think that the two of them together is perfect. I think that because they completely work 50-50 together. They are equally um, being successful in the show while they're together 50-50 perfectly. And for, I mean, for a case of it is, Cece doesn't really have guys in her life, you know? And the guys in her life don't like her for her, and she notices that, and she really, really doesn't like that. And Winston just isn't good with women, like, at all. I mean... I, I would write a book on how to be good with girls just by watching what Winston did and then write the opposite of what Winston did. And he's not good with relationships at all. And if Cece knows anything, it's it's those two. <laughs> so they really kind of perfectly mesh off of each other. Um, I think their relationship is just really funny. I think a lot of the situations they get in are really funny. A lot of the inside jokes that they have get to be really funny because they just work really well together. I think it's a very well-written friendship. I think the writers finally found it. Whatever they were looking for with those two, they found it when they got those two together because, you know, it didn't, it, it wasn't right off the bat where Winston and Cece were like best buds, you know? It wasn't like Nick and Jess where the chemistry was almost immediately. These two, as a friendship, just immediately... It wasn't like that, but it gradually got into something that I think the writers noticed that it just really, really worked, that they ran with it, that they, they put more effort into it, and it just got to be really genuine. It was really good. I was glad to see those two um, found themselves in this show. All in all, I mean, I would say this show has some seriously rewatchable moments and episodes in general, and I just, I mean, that's really important for a comedy cable network show, you know, like you don't, you don't really get that a lot. Um, the genuine realness to each character, the more you get to know them, is something that makes this show so good and and so binge worthy. I love that about this 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 show. I love I love shows who can really put a lot of effort into characters and build char character development. And I think the show did a really great job. I mean, there's a lot of character growth, and there is real life adversity and real life ups and downs that the characters fail but succeed through. You know, as you watch them watch them and, and, and grow and change and results of them. It's, it's real life stuff. It's, it's a lot of things that are very relatable. The show is very relatable. I think the acting chemistry between the core group of characters too is, I mean, obviously extremely strong. Um, given their comedic timing is, is, is literally always so good and it's rarely misdirected. I've had few scenes where I can really think of that I was just like, I don't know what the actor was going for there. I just don't think they, they landed it. I mean, there's this one scene that Winston like barges into like his conference room at work 
and it's just like, dude, it was like the whole thing was supposed to be a, a joke, and I was like, I didn't. Don't think he landed that at all, like at all. I mean, what stopped me for so long from watching this show was the idea that I just didn't love the character archetype of Jess, you know? I mean, I just, I didn't think she could handle an entire show as the lead playing that stereotypical hipster, dorky, goody two-shoes girl. But what completely, I mean, pleasantly surprised me was the fact that the show noticed that too and, and, and decided to branch off harder into the other characters that I ended up loving the most. I mean, Schmidt is absolutely hilarious. And the fact that the show realized that and gravitated towards that, why can't every show be as self-aware as New Girl was? I mean, seriously. Um, the only things that I just I didn't really love was, I think the last season was just really, really rushed. And at times it's just really hard to watch. But as an entirety of a TV show, New Girl is really, really good. It's really good. 8.5 out of 10. Peace.